this lesson we'll talk about higher index radicals. So far we learned how to calculate square roots. Remember, taking a square root is undoing the operation of squaring something. But what if we want to undo the operation of rising something to the nth power? Well, then we are taking nth degree root. What does it mean? Formally, the nth degree root of certain quantity a is such a quantity b that when we raise b to the nth, we get back our a. So nth degree root of a is such a b that b to the n gives us back a. Let's make sure that we know how each part of the nth degree root is called. If we want to indicate that we are going to take n's degree root from certain quantity a, then at the top of this root sign we indicate the index of the root. So if we write n here, it represents the n's degree root, or the root of index n. Particularly, if n is equal to 2, we are talking about square root of a. Customary, we don't need to write any number here. It is assumed that this is a root of degree 2. If n is equal to 3, we deal with cubic root, and then we have to write the 3. For n higher than 2 or 3, for example 4, 5, and any higher number, we often call the root a radical. So this is a sign of nth degree radical particularly a radical of second degree is called square root and a radical of third degree is called cubic root or third degree root. Okay, so we cleared how this sign is called. This is nth degree radical. Whatever you write under this sign is called radicant. So this is nth degree radical of a. a is a radicant. Let's see how this definition of nth degree root works in practice. OK, how much is cubic root of 2 cubed? Well, since cubic root is undoing the power of 3, that should be equal to 2. And let's confirm with our definition. Oh, yes. Cubic root of something is such a number, then this number raised to the 3 gives us the something. But yes, 2 to the 3 is exactly the radicand. So our answer complies with the definition. Let's try to take cubic root of negative 2 cube. Well, similarly as before, that's supposed to be negative 2. Why? Because negative 2 when cubed, it's actually negative 2 cubed. So it gives us back our radicand. What about fourth degree root of 16? Hmm. If we rewrite the fourth degree root of 16 as fourth degree root of, and 16 can be treated as a power of 2, 2 to the 4 is 16, then we notice that the fourth degree root is actually undoing this power of 4, so we end up with 2, because according to our definition, 2 to the 4 is giving us back our 16, so everything seems to be fine. OK, what about 10th degree root of negative 5 to the 10? Hmm. Following the same pattern as before, we would like to write negative 5. Well, but here we have a problem, because actually both numbers, negative 5 or 5, when raised to the 10, will give us exactly the same value, will give us the radicand. But we would like to have just one answer, a unique answer for every root. So here's the rule. For any even degree radical, the answer that we are choosing is positive. That's what's called principal root. OK, let's leave the correct answer here. That will be just 5. Therefore, thinking about cancelling the index with the exponent works perfectly well for odd degree radicals, but for even degree radicals, we need to be careful. We need to always leave the answer positive. 
So if we want to comply with the same rule as in the previous examples, what we could do is write the same number, negative 5, but put an absolute value around it to make it positive 5. Remember, we need to be careful about this sign only for the even degree radicals. Odd degree radicals are okay. We use exactly the same base, no matter if it's positive or negative. Even degree radicals, we need to end up with absolute value of the base, so leave the base positive. Okay, let's see this example. Here we need to calculate fifth degree root of x to the 5. Since this is fifth degree radical, which means odd index, we don't need to worry about absolute value. So the fifth degree radical is undoing the fifth power and will end up with just an x. And finally, the last example, we need to calculate sixth degree root of x to the 6 and y to the 12. x to the 6 really tells us that we have six x's, and sixth degree root means that from each six of the same factors, we can take one representant out of the radical. Similarly, if we have y to the 12, that's like 12 y's multiplied by itself. So we can group those 12 y's into two groups, six y's in each group. From each group of six y's, we can take one y out. So from the first group, first y, and from the second group, second y. So altogether, y times y is y square. Here we deal with six degree radical, which is even degree. Therefore, our answer must be positive. So either we assume that all variables, in this case x and y, are both positive, and then we don't have to worry. Or if this condition is not stated in a problem, we would have to put absolute value around the x, because we need to make sure that the final answer is positive. y squared is always positive, but who knows, x could be negative. So unless the question says, assume that all variables are positive, we would need to remember to put this absolute value around the x. Okay, let's look at our rules again. An even degree radical can only be taken of a non-negative quantity, and its value is non-negative. For example, fourth degree root of negative 16 actually can't be taken. Fourth degree root of 16 is 2, but fourth degree root of negative 16 doesn't exist. D and E stands for doesn't exist. Why? Because assume that this root is equal to a number b. Therefore, according to the definition, b to the 4 would have to be negative 16. But that's impossible, because if you raise any number to the 4th power, you end up with non-negative number, and on that side you have a negative number that's impossible to be equal. So, even the degree radicals are only taken of a non-negative quantity, never negative. And also, the value of even degree radical is always non-negative, because we agreed to choose a principal root as a unique answer to the radical of even degree. And the second rule is, an odd degree radical of a negative quantity is negative. For example, this cubic root of negative 2 cubed it's actually the same as cubic root of negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So cubic root of negative 8 is negative 2. Odd degree root of a negative number is negative. Even degree root of a negative number doesn't exist. Okay, let's practice some questions. Since we are going to calculate various cubic roots, it's a good idea to know the first five perfect cube numbers, so it will be easy for you to recognize them under the cubic root. So what are the first five perfect cube numbers? Well, the first one is 1, because 1 can be expressed as 1 cube. The second number is 8, 
because 8 can be expressed as 2 cube. The following one, well, let's think by yourself. Oh, that's 27, because 3 cube is 27. OK, what's the next one? What's 4 cube? 4 cube is 64. And finally, 5 cube. 5 cube is 125. So those are the first 5 cubic numbers. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. It's a good idea for you to memorize those numbers. And something special about 64. 64 is a perfect cube. And we also know that it is a perfect square. It is 8 square or it is 4 cube. So that's a very special number. The second practice problem asks us to evaluate the following radicals. And that's the third degree radical of 64. OK, let's see. 64 is just the number that I've been talking about. It's a perfect cube number. It is 4 cube. So if you see it as third degree root of 4 cube, that's very easy to simplify because the third degree root is undoing the power of cube. So it's equal to 4. The next one, this time we have cubic root of a negative number. So the answer must be negative. Assume that this will be just 125, which is one of our first five perfect cube numbers. So easy to recognize, that's a 5 cube. So if this wouldn't be a decimal, I would say the value of this radical is negative 5. However, we have a decimal. So what number, when raised to the cube, gives us 0 0.125? Hmm, we'll have to move the decimal one place value because when you cube a decimal, you will have to count all those place values together out of all three numbers. So it's three decimal places. So negative 0.5 when cubed gives you exactly negative 0.125. If you're still not sure, you may want to double check on your calculator cube this number, you should end up with the radicand. OK, let's look at the next example. This is cubic root of a quotient. Well, we can split the cubic root of a numerator and denominator. So we already know what cubic root of 8 is. 8 is 2 cubed, therefore cubic root of 8 is just 2. Cubic root of a negative number is negative, so we carry on the negative, and cubic root of 27 is 3. Finally, fourth degree root of 81. If you change 81 as a power of 3, that this is exactly 3 to the 4, because 81 is 9 times 9, and each 9 produces 2 3s. So altogether we have four trays under root. So the fourth degree radical will annihilate this exponent 4, leaving us with just symbol 3. In a couple more examples, here we have negative fifth degree root of 32. OK, we want to carry on the negative, and fifth degree root of 32, instead of 32, rewrite this as a power of 2. You can check that 32 is the fifth power of 2, because 32 factors into, for example, 2 times 16, 2 times 8, and 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So we have 2 to the 5. Therefore, this 5 cancels that 5, and we end up with negative 2. Finally, we have two examples that are radicals of expressions. Again, cubic root of a negative is negative. Cubic root of x cubed is just x. And cubic root of y to the 9. Remember, the rule is we take the exponent and we divide by the index. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we end up with y to the 3. Another approach is, imagine that under the cubic root we have 9 y's. 
So maybe see it on the side, cubic root and y, 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 y. I wrote those nine y's by grouping them in trees. How many groups of three? Three groups of three. Each group of three contributes to one y outside of the radical. One y from here, one y from this group, and one y from that group, altogether y cube. So you may want to rewrite this way a few times, but obviously this is kind of annoying because it's so much writing. So the rule of division on exponential level works a lot faster. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Like before, 3 divided by 3 was 1. Finally, the last example, I will copy the first minus because it's outside of the root. It will be just carried on. And then cubic root of a negative is negative. Cubic root of 27, oh, 27 is our favorite cubic number. So root 27 is 3. And cubic root of x to the 12, remember, divide on exponential level. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Don't forget to rewrite the x. Keep the base x and the exponent will be 4. Therefore, altogether we have plus 3x to the 4. In the next practice problem, we are asked to estimate each value up to four decimal places. So this time we are using calculator because those radicands are not perfect powers of easy numbers. So not every radical can be done by hand. In this case, we need to use calculator and that's why the word estimate is used in a question. Okay, but how do we introduce cubic root or six degree root or some other higher indexed root to the calculator? Well, that really depends what kind of calculator you have. Some calculators will contain this button. And if, for example, I would like to calculate fourth degree root from two, I would have to punch four, then this button x degree root from y, and then 2, and then equal sign. The value of this particular root, you can check on your calculator, should be approximately 1.1892. But not every calculator has this particular key. On some calculators, you will need to use this type of key. This represents a power. So how do we do the same question? using this key. Well, you need to realize that the fourth degree root can be expressed as an exponent. So the fourth degree root is the same as exponent one quarter. So using this button, if you don't have any other option, you start with your radicand two, and then you raise it to the exponent one quarter. Obviously, to introduce one quarter, we need to put a bracket and then go one divide by four, complete the bracket, and then make it equal. Obviously, you will obtain the same answer as before. So check your calculator and see what kind of keys you have. The bottom line is you need to learn how to use your calculator to evaluate this kind of roots. Okay, so now I would suggest that you stop the video and try to find out the values of those particular roots and then check with the values that I will give you in a second. Cubic root of 2 up to 4 decimal places is 1, 2, 5, 9, 9. The negative 6 degree root of 0. 0.5 ends up to be negative 0. 0.8909. Here we have interesting case, three times the fifth degree root of negative two. So whatever you obtained for the fifth degree root of negative two, you need to multiply by three. The overall value should be negative 3.4461 when rounded to four places. The next example is equal approximately 0.97 four zero up to four places. Obviously previous 
examples are all approximately. So we can put a dot or we can put a wave. Both of these signs mean approximately. And finally, fourth degree root of a negative number, oh, that doesn't exist. We can't calculate the even degree root of a negative number. Okay, we can make some observations on the base of those examples. For example, and degree root of a prime number, like third degree root of two, is irrational. It has infinitely many digits. That's why we rounded it. We estimate to four places only. And also, even degree root of a negative number, like in this case, it doesn't exist. It is imaginary. It's not a real number. Okay, our last practice question is a word problem. A cubical box has a volume of two cubic feet. Use the volume formula V equals S cube, where S is one side of the cube. So we have a side here, the same side there, and the same side there. To find the length S of each side of the box. So what do we have given? We have given the volume. V is given. We need to solve for S. Okay, let's write down the equation. Instead of V, we can write 2. And we are looking for S. To do that, we simply need to get rid of this cube. Okay, which operation inverses the power of 3? Cubic root. So we apply cubic root on both sides of the equation. That cancels the power of 3. And we end up with S equal cubic root of 2. Therefore, the length S is approximately equal to 1.26 feet. So approximately one and a quarter of a foot.